And now we turn to a score by Emily Gray. And I have to say, Emily, it is fantastic to get a score from you for this particular uh, set of evaluations, this challenge. And it's also kind of cool because a, a lot of uh, people in the orchestration online community don't realize that you are an experienced professional arranger. You put out a lot of your own arrangements of and, and re sort of, well, arrangements, I'm trying to find a different word, but, a, you know, kind of a, a rescaling of different works for different instrumental combinations, usually chamber. And, um, and you know, and also you're an experienced um, clarinetist uh, specializing to some degree with uh, alto clarinet. I can't remember. I think the first time we be we became acquainted in the group, you had been done. You've been doing a lot of work on contra alto, right? The E flat contra bass. Um, and uh, yeah, it's, so yeah, so and and also <laughs> kind of a really fun thing about this evaluation is the um that we're that you sent in the c section right uh that's kind of a strange strange way of putting it the c uh um portion of the of this piece and it's it's like this transitional moment in the piano piece and i have written in my criteria notes here calm surface over restless undercurrent right um and like how to that you sort of have to stay subtle and not overemphasize the pulse and without any textural progression or emotional progression then things may sound a little repetitive in terms of this just being a restatement of what happened before of course we don't have that concern because i'm just looking at this particular uh, part of the piece uh then right in here my um, my notes say warming of texture leading to transitional change and you've certainly done that uh, the middle voice adding adding color and intensity spot on so I feel you ticked a lot of boxes without seeing my notes and you know of course perhaps a lot of that is just obvious I love the presence of the bass clarinet and the sort of you know the kind of trade-off between the two timbres here uh, one thing that I wonder, you know, whether it might be um, uh, something to add here would be uh, some kind of articulation that was more than just, you know, than just written repeated notes. Of course, um, the standard note <laughs> in context is a, another form of articulation, right, which is just has just as much thought put into it, possibly even more than a staccato or a tenuto or a accented staccato or whatever, right? Or a marcato mark. Uh, but I, I'm just wondering whether or not like uh, mezzo staccato would have worked right here, you know, uh, 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 rather than just dun, 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 dun. Do you know what I mean? Oops, sorry. So, um, you know, just kind of having that, it, it might bring more of that, you know, restless undercurrent like to life. Just, just give it a little bit more bounce, a little bit more spring, um, without being too, um, too noticeable. You know, calling too much attention to itself. And um, yeah, and th this is just a you know, lovely idea right in here um, to double uh, the violin, first violins with first oboe, and then come in with the English horn uh, when it goes and going to an octave here. I think that that's also very cool. So you know, once again, like you're using very subtle effects here, like sort of a very much less is more approach, right? Um, and like looking at this as a transition to the part that builds up to the tutti, right? And having followed <clears throat> our sort of opening entrance, you know, the the prologue and then the, and then the first, uh, you know the first integrated statement that I think this works really really well right so as section C I, I think that this you know it's like this kind of like little island in the in the piano piece so so I'd, I'd say that that's you know once again you got that absolutely right so so um so like what 
how could you follow this particular um, this particular approach, you know, and like what could possibly be stated a little bit more or have a little bit, you know, like how could you achieve your goal here uh, even more effectively, right? That's that's really the approach I like to take with these um with these evaluations rather than, um, you know, saying, well, you know, change all this and, you know, that's not going to work, blah, blah, blah. Because I just, yeah, I just hate that. You know, that's, it, that doesn't build people, <laughs> doesn't build people up. Um, yeah, I, I, so like a couple of things, maybe this would come through a little clearer um, with the same uh, with the same kind of slurring pattern as the uh, middle strings, you know, da 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 da, as opposed to da, because right? you got that, you know, you got that sort of jump right in here, um, you know, up into the tenor register, and it's completely playable for for um, bassoonists. That's not the issue. The issue is whether or not you know, like how how well this matches up with the middle strings. And my instinct is that, like, I think it would be better to have them, you know, if you're going to have a bit of push right in here on the downbeat with your middle strings, I think you want to sort of match that with the bassoonists, not just try to sort of um, smooth it over, right? Now, having said that, of course, you've got the, you know, you are smoothing things over already in your melody, right? Uh, so I, I, I don't think it makes a big difference, but it's just a possible you know, a possible point that would just make it a little clearer on the, you know, in terms of the motion, in terms of the downbeat. Um, so, and, th and then the other thing too is like, this is a little nebulous, like crescendo to what, right? Diminuendo from what, All right? So, so here you're saying piano, crescendo, here we have a mezzo piano entrance for our clarinets. So essentially you're, you know, the, um, the implication is that you are going crescendo to mezzo piano and I think you could go up to mezzo forte here without any problems at all you know because like crescendo to mezzo piano from piano it's you know it's not really you know, it doesn't really add that much oomph right it doesn't like is it is it going somewhere or is it just a mere inflection right and if it's just a mere inflection then we don't even need these big you know these markings right crescendo and diminuendo which have you know they have a sort of a um there's a meaning to them that kind of goes beyond a hairpin, right? It's just a real, like, scaling up or scaling down the general strength of a phrase, right? As opposed to hairpins, which can mean anything. They can mean nuance or um, or they can mean, like, a just a nice gradual incline or decline. But, um, so, my recommendation would be just do away with the you know, with the crescendo and diminuendo text markings, and then just mark it out in, you know, mark out in hairpins exactly what you want to happen there. And then, um, and then have like a destination dynamic, right? And in fact, the destination dynamic could come to fruition here, right? With the clarinets entering uh, at mezzo piano crescendo to mezzo forte, and then diminuendo out to say like back to piano here or something, right? But just kind of staying out of the, you know, out of the sort of soggy middle, <laughs> right? Uh, of mezzo dynamics too much as, you know, like like going back, I would say like crescendoing up to mezzo forte and then going back to mezzo piano here would be, you know, it just sort of robs the the surge of its, you know, of, of its pointiness, of its, um, uh, of its impact. Uh, now right in here, see, see this is the, this is the thing that's a little unclear. Piano crescendo from here, by the time the player gets to this point, they might be mezzo piano. So if the horn player under them starts in, like if you're, if you're intending this to be a trade-off, then, um, then this person is going to be underpowered, right? And then like if there are further crescendos implied throughout, right, then it becomes further of a mess, right? So, so perhaps if you went piano crescendo, you know, to like it's say like for instance, piano crescendo to mezzo piano, mezzo piano crescendo, and then just and then I then you could just put in hairpins here, and the players will listen to each other, right? 
and you don't really have to mark uh, well do all these calculations well if this means that's mezzo forte here and then it has to be forte there and blah 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 don't worry about that right but um and and for to a certain extent you don't have to worry about it that much here i'm just like just saying you know for being ex exact about it right you know what is what is the dynamic when you hand off here so here's my solution start off pianissimo right because the the horns are already going to have you know everybody's being really subtle and you know the color here is just very is very um beautifully controlled right so the horns are going to feel uh, quite a bit stronger here compared to what happened before so maybe the um maybe if you start at piano uh, sorry sorry at pianissimo crescendo hairpin right uh and then mark piano here and then piano crescendo right but just have the hairpin instead of the crescendo in there Ugh, sorry and then and then just put in hairpins leading forwards then the players will just listen to each other and get it right and then here like if you're going up to mezzo forte then you could mark that here mezzo forte and then just have a you know have your hairpin going back so so yeah so i just think like just being more precise about it um you know managing it more is you know will will help to solve some of those problems right it's it's almost like a mathematical tool like the introduction of the hairpin um, and people sort of slowly kind of giving up on, you know, writing in a forte when they mean an accent and things like that. So like the more classical style approach, you know, when you got to scores that were complex, as complex as Berlioz, right, there was just a real need to, to have, you know, almost more of like, you know, a, like a ruler and a compass and a protractor, right? It's kind of what I, what I think of the, the move forward. So, so I would say just, just kind of keep that approach in, in sections like this, where you have so much going on, and then you can just really, with precision, right, rather than leaving it up to the players, which I feel is not exactly the right idea here. Like you, I think you need to be the master. You have such a great ear. And, um, and a great sense of proportion. It's just just so obvious from this. I mean, I I I wish that you had like sent me like you know m more if you had been able to, right? Um, because I always find your stuff so fascinating. You know the um, your your works for um, I think solo is it solo and duo low clarinets and um and then also some of your other arrangements that i've seen you share on on facebook um you know just be, just because I, I don't have a chance to like drop in and make a comment about it and say oh really great emily did you try xyz it's just you know sometimes i get so busy or so distracted with a project you know um i'll be orchestrating something and it'll just take so much out of me that you know all i want to do when i'm done with that is just you know take a walk around the neighborhood and just turn off anything with a screen for and you know and, and if the and if it's intense enough like a project that I was doing at the beginning of this year which is going to start up again <laughs> uh, right in the middle of all these evaluations but that's all right um uh, orchestrating uh, an evening's worth of entertainment for a Pacific choir I just you know I just felt like it was really hard for me to keep up with social media and you know the orchestration online group but you know i really did kind of, kind of try to soldier on with that but i think around that time you might have had some more arrangements coming out or maybe it, maybe my memory is playing tricks with me but anyways i always feel that it's really high quality um so so one last little thing that i'm i think that you, that you could possibly inject into here is some more nuance so you got your double bass part in here and these, you know, these repeated notes and so on. They don't really need any nuances in them over these first four bars, but you know, I mean, it's it's perfectly fine to go, you know, bum 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 pull out da 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 da. I think I think you can give the player some guidance, you know, um and and just, you know, once again, don't leave it up to them. Just you know, just put in, you know, maybe more expression, I think. And then you just have, you know, then this, this line will soar, right? And of course, if you mean to keep it extra calm, right? I mean, I myself <laughs> have put in calm surface over restless undercurrent. And if you feel, well, you know, it's, I don't want them to interrupt that feeling of calm. 
um, in, in any way, you know, even to just have a more soaring line, then that's fine too, right? But that's just a, you know, one way of possibly bringing a little bit more life into it. Um, and I, I really, you know, I really respect the way that you hold off on doubling the octave in terms of wind doubling of the strings. So, so that is very, very cool. Um, just a thought, like if you really want to push up into this, if there were uh, an addition, you know, like flute or something on top or, or some other, um, some other kind of a strategy, then um, then you could get a lot of color out of this. Now, of course, you have, you know, you're just doing a short section of this and, you know, and, and so you have kept your tools just to read instruments. And I think that that's your toolbox to read instruments. So I think that's perfectly fine. You know, there's, there's no need to like add flutes just to get a few notes up in here. Um, I, you know, that I, I also respect that. Um, but it could be a way of like bringing like in a like a, a nice um, radiant crest over the top of this if you had wanted to, right? Uh, or even tripling the octave and having um, having that momentary appearance of the flute be um, be doubled by violins divisi, right? And playing playing a, an additional octave. So I mean, so there's there's a bunch of different ways of playing it, and I'm not uh, and, and I'm not I never say like you should do this, you shouldn't do that, but it's just you know ways of um, you know options, right? That that are available to you. Um, yeah, um, yeah, I, I would probably, I would probably put these, um, yeah, I, I would probably have the, um, these slurs go over the top right there. So, yeah, I mean, I mean, other than that, I mean, what can I say? It's simple and beautiful. Like, you know, you knew exactly what you wanted to do. You wrote it in. I'm just, I'm just offering little editorial suggestions. But there's like, there's nothing really wrong with anything here. You know, in terms of, uh, in terms of like being ready to go to the stands. This is just as ready as, you know, as uh, Timothy's piece that we just looked at in the previous evaluation, right? Um, I mean, you know what you want. You are an experienced musician and arranger, and you know. I just I wish that I could get longer, um, you know, um, sections and 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 things that I could sort of pour over and marvel at from you. So so you know that's always welcome. All right, Emily. Um, and you know you know if you have something that you want to bring into the live evaluation sessions or just have you know have you need an opinion on in the Patreon group, that is what I am there for. You know, as the person you're supporting, right? So please bring me something that I can help you with if, if that ever is needed, right? Because obviously you know what you want to do. Okay. So, um, so I, I'm just going to, I'm just going to end it there, you know, with huge respect to you and, and appreciation for, you know, your presence in the community and really has met, made a big difference and, you know, sticking up for alto clarinets, <laughs> um, that is a lesson that I also learned from you. Um, and, you know, I mean, I had a sort of a joking, a jokingly negative appraisal of them, you know, just kind of, kind of almost like alto, sorry. Um, uh, I'm, I'm thinking of the, suddenly I'm just thinking of the French, um, sort of like viola jokes and stuff like that. But, you know, like, you know, you really forced me to think of them more as, you know, a, a, a kind of um, something similar to a, a a uh, basset horn or a basset clarinet, you know, with that beautiful middle range and the, and the, um, you know, the kind of lower overhead and, and the, the complex, the complexity of the tone that is created when, you know, you put in a limitation on it, which, you know, of course it's just, you know, is something, it is, it is a tone quality. I wish that I could bring into the orchestra, but of course nobody's ever going to allow it, you know, to have, um, you know, basset horn or alto clarinet, or um, or contra alto clarinet in the orchestra more right um, so it's still kind of more the province of concert band but but yeah but you know that doesn't mean that I can't dream <laughs> okay so thank you Emily uh, and um, so if you're following me on this 
uh, why not join me in the next evaluation? Because that is also a really cool score. Thanks everybody for your support and for watching these videos and for making comments below. And I will see you soon.